as a uni lag MBBS student, that's the best level of your life. Like, if you're in foreign level, just enjoy yourself because you're not gonna get the kind of level again. In third level and third level, there are professional exams in each level. When you get to 400 level, bruv, there's no professional exam. <laughs> Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to Darius Era. Um, long time no see. But no time for too many complimentaries. We're going straight into the video. So you guys have been asking me for this. I'm going to give it to you. Yo, so we're going to be talking about... I just have my laptop here. So in case you see me look down, I'm looking into my laptop. We're going to be talking about um, the Nigerian Medical School breakdown. But in this video, it's, it's more of uni lag specific i'm a uni lag i'm not a uni ben or ui or OAV. i don't know what's going on there i don't know what's happening in uni lag and so it's like i'm going to tell you maybe if you guys request for other breakdowns i could do some collabs with other people or try to get information for you guys if i cannot get to them but for now i was focusing on uni lag so let's go don't forget to subscribe to my channel or all this information i'm giving you love you all Mwah. i'm not going to talk about 100 level because 100 level is not my forte okay apart from the fact that in 100 level, you're going to be doing practically what you did in your high school, just like a revision, biology, chemistry, physics, I think a little bit of math, and some general studies courses, like uh, mm. use of English and some other courses. A lot of people ACs, they don't even go for classes and they do very well. Just go there and then just do your thing. 200 level is what we're going to enter because this 200 level is shaggy. This 200 level is something you've never seen before. I'm always emphasizing this in my video. You've been watching me since and this shouldn't be news to you, okay? In 100 level, you have your first semester and second semester. Fine. But when you get to 200 level, there's nothing like semester. Semesters don't exist. You just have one full session and then sometimes they give you one or two weeks break in between. So your 200 level, you're going to be offering for the first four weeks. You'll be offering some introductory courses and um, HFD. I think you do HFD for one week. You MCBM or MCM 201, those things you do them in your those are introductory, introductory. You can still pass them very well. I think HIV can get like HIV, I never saw my results. But the MCM, I think maybe like 70 something or 60 something. I don't know. You'll pass it. That one is not a problem. And will give it to you. You'll pass it. After that, you're going to have another eight weeks where you're going to be doing your 201 courses. So you're going to do anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, and foundation of medicine. And at 201, that's anatomy 201, biochemistry 201, physiology 201, you do within those first eight weeks. That's your module one. So from 201 is the last course you're going to offer. And that course is called foundation of medicine and it's a very annoying course oh. okay the history of medicine ethics the principles of the principles that guide the hippocratic oath all those type of things that are like the background of medicine so they give you that that's the idea you have four models in 200 level so it's taking system by system so your first model you had your cardiovascular respiratory system your second module you're going to have your gastrointestinal system renal the liver and all of that then your third module is where you have neurosciences so your brain um the skin special senses all of that and your third module and then your fourth module that is 204 that's anna 204 physiology 204 and all of that you have your endocrine and reproductive system so that's basically what you're going to be doing throughout the year so each module lasts about eight weeks they give you a break and that break is for like a week and after each module you write an in course all those things make up your summative assessments and then your exam is about 60 percent or so and then these are like 40. i'm not sure of the percentage they decide but then it's just a rough estimate so each in course assessment you have practical mcq if depends on the course you may have theory as well your exam is usually one week two weeks rather one week for um exam and one week for um the practical before then they give you about two weeks for revision so you have two weeks for revision and reading and then two weeks for your exam and then you go on your break and that your break that i give you is only two weeks break they're going to give you after for the whole year you start your commerce commerce one posting urban that you go to places and i'm taking their blood pressure i'm doing different community health type of stuff the different local governments where you go and share questionnaires get some do data analysis for the first time so th that's then that's going to last for like four weeks then there's space for the receipt exam because receipt exam is always six weeks after your main exam so how it works if you fail the first exam you're entitled to a receipt and if but if you fail the receipt then you have to repeat the year 300 level you have to do um as usual an introductory course 
FPP is the introductory course you're doing in 300 level. In 300 level, instead of it to be better into four, like it was in 200 level, you are going to have three modules. Let's just call them modules. So you have FPP, you have GPP, and you have SPP. FPP is for like two weeks, and after FPP, you write an exam, general exam. And remember that in theory level, you're offering pathology and pharmacology. So pharmacology is one course. In Unilag, pathology is very into five. It's not like other places where they join and lump everything as one. Morbid anatomy, that's the anatomic and molecular pathology. Hematology, and that is blood related. And then there's um, clinical pathology or chemical pathology, whichever one you want to call it. And then there's microbiology, that one deals with organisms. So those four are pathology and then there's pharmacology in that course so fpp you do everything together but the fundamentals of everything and then you write the exam together as one you know i said gpp is general so you have about eight weeks to do gpp and then you now start having your systemic as your spp so spp you start from cardiovascular system respiratory system especially in morbid anatomy that's where you really see that they specify the systems and all of that yes spp is system so it's cvs respiratory and everything and this was such a problem this was such a problem because, bro, we have morbid anatomy. Morbid anatomy, like the way they did your own SPPM or something else. Normally, SPP is very big. Like all the systems, you do all the pathology in that in that SPP. In anatomy, we're talking about where are the structures of the body. All the structures in the body, you want to know all the veins, all the vessels, all the arteries, all the nerves, all the muscles, all the ligaments. You want to know where everything is located in the body. When you go to physiology, physiology is about the normal functioning of the body. Now, when you come to pathology in 300, pathology is everything abnormal. Now, abnormal functioning of the body, that's pathology. So, you're looking at every possible abnormal function that is important. You have to learn. So, SPP talks about its system, and so it is very, very big. Morbid anatomy, which is a branch of pathology, try to make it easier by dividing it into segments. So, after each system, you write an example, bro. Go to like five different courses just for SPP in morbid. And each course can be like 100 questions, and it is so plain, you will read tire. My dear, those 100 questions. Guess how many percent? Two percent. Because the all of SPP is 10 percent. The all of GPP is 10 percent. The all of FPP is 10 percent. For the cardiovascular that you are reading for, there is 100 questions. Now you are racking your head and you have having sleepless nights and doing overnight for. Bro, that's just two percent of your of your 10 percent. And everybody cannot get two over two because you cannot get 100. Maybe you get 1.5 if you are smart or one. So it's one percent you are busy fighting for. And you cannot let go of that one percent because what if you get 49 over? Okay, let's not say 49 over 50. Let's we'll say, bro, what if you get 49 over, over 50? What if you get 49? That one percent you need because it's one percent, not one mark. One percent is going live into your school. This is medical school. Priority is to pass first. First, I'm talking about oh, did I get distinction? No, did I not get distinction? You do SPP for the whole year and then you have your exams. Obviously, revision for two weeks, exam for another two weeks, and they have a vacation. And then you're supposed to do another commerce post. So, someone told me one time, no, you had that theory level professional exam, pathology and pharmacology. You start seeing life differently. You start greeting people you know to greet before. You'll be more humble. Because you don't know that, bro. Who we cry? The pro ah. Let's leave that. Let's leave that. We're talking about the breakdown. We're talking about the emotions. 400 level, guys. One level is the sweetest level that you can ever come across in Unilag as a medical student. As a Unilag MBBS student, that's the best level of your life. Like, if you're in 400 level, just enjoy yourself. Because you're not going to get that kind of level again. In two level and third level, there are professional exams in each level. When you get to 400 level, bruv, there's no professional exam. You are just writing an end of posting exam. That's when you start your... In fact, it's a very sweet year. You start your clinicals. You know, you start your pediatrics. You start your internal medicine. You start your O&G. That's for pregnant women. Surgery. That's when, like, you're, you're like, two level and third level, you are reading and you are tired of reading all those books. You're not seeing the action. Four level, you start meeting patients. They teach you how to clock. They teach you how to take history, how to examine. You're seeing patients when you want. You're, you're all the things you learn in pathology. You are looking at the practical. You're looking at the practical in this 400 level. It's a very sweet level, my dear. What makes it sweet and all these things is the fact that there's no exam. Okay, fine, let me not lie. It's actually interesting. Like, I was really interested. In everything when I enter 400 level because that's my first exposure, first exposure to patients, the clinical side of medicine, and everything. So I was really excited about 400. Level. I'm not going to lie about that, but the fact that there is no professional exam after that year is a very, very good thing because you keep writing end of post exam and all the end of post exam together are just 10 percent of your 600 level. So everybody just gives you the chance to learn about how to do certain things, take histories, and all of that, and then they don't really nobody really stresses you in this level. That's the truth. So you're just taking like the baby of the clinical team. It's a very nice level. Time to say you do FOM four one for two weeks. Or do FOM four one financial medicine every year. You always do financial medicine. It follows you like break. 
all really makes a frame annoying is that you want to read like too many bulky things to read. You don't want to be reading that um hypocrisy is the father of medicine. Like I'm excited he's the father of medicine, but like right now I'm trying to cram all the possible nerves that supply this particular muscle. Like I need that do you get. So you do FOM four hundred for the first two weeks. Uh, that's your foundation of medicine. And then you do internal medicine. Internal medicine, you do that for three months. That's where you do medicine proper. You know, they teach you properly how to take histories, how to do examination, everything, how to examine all the systems. Very organized departments in Unilag. You really learn how to be a doctor properly from head to toe. The formats in which you should sit with patients, ask them questions, how you can arrive at your diagnosis. Then you go to surgery. Surgery, this one is about cutting. You know, you know, surgeries, acute cases, cases that need repair. It's a very interesting one. That's where you see the theater. You go to the theater, you wear your scrubs, you observe, and you learn a lot of surgical things. My best posting in front of was actually surgery because I like surgeons. They are very, very proud and very, very smart. And they are very, very... I like people that test you. Like, they make me want to know book. Do you understand? They make me want to like really pursue this medicine. Like, surgeons know their stuff. I like you when I see doctors that know their stuff because it just makes me want to read more and want to be like this doctor. And surgeons... Surgeons are like that. So, pediatrics, pediatrics, hey, pediatrics is stressful. Jesus Christ. Pediatrics was the most stressful posting for me in 400 level because we had to do 7 a.m. morning reviews then and we had to do calls a lot. Um, and that's for children. Obstetrics and gynecology. Well, that posting is for pregnant women and that posting is the chillest posting in this world. Both junior and senior is the chillest posting in this life. They don't have stress. I don't know. They don't have stress anyway. I did my electives in obstetrics and gynecology and I did not regret it. They don't have stress in that department. They don't... Everything is just true. Maybe it's because it's just one system. The reproductive system of women. You know that you will read all of that. It can be very tricky. But it was a really interesting posting. A really stress-free posting for me. But you do internal medicine for 10 weeks. Then you do surgery for another 10 weeks. And then you do pediatrics for 5 weeks. While you do pediatrics for 5 weeks. ONG for 5 weeks. So you share those ones in your junior posting. But pediatrics was the, was the opposite of ONG. ONG was so stress-free. Pediatrics was just... Was just Jawala was too much. Everything about children, kilograms, you do it by kg, you do it by weight. He's calculating doses, knowing specific symptoms and signs for each age group. The sign, the symptoms that neonates to present with, different from the symptoms that infants to present with, different from the symptoms that toddlers to present. Like, you're just like, what is, why? Why so much stress in one department? Like, it's a very cute department, but the stress it put, puts on medical students, someone, it's not me. But if you want to do it, I actually think it's actually really nice for you. Like your primary postings and then you do secondary postings anesthesia you know it was a very interesting posting you know anesthesiology what they do they're the ones that put patients to sleep during surgery you learn about the different drugs that they use you learn a lot of life-saving skills anesthesia it's a very interesting posting um i think it's for about four weeks and you do psychiatry for another four weeks psychiatry for another four weeks psychiatry too was a very interesting posting it's about mental health you're studying about mental health for four weeks you do have technology for two weeks but it was a very interesting posting just annoying just annoying because this eye is a very different you know you've been doing the body scenes you've forgotten the eye it's a very just it's just a very unique structure that has everything that is its own so you will learn about the eye all over again and at first it was so tasking and so annoying but it became very very interesting it became very interesting i didn't we didn't get to spend that, that much time because it was just two weeks and once you start your classes you start your clinicals you are seeing as you're seeing you are, you are seeing you are doing eventually to stick but it's a very interesting posting we did that for two weeks and then you do radiotherapy and radiology for another two weeks. That one's about scans, ultrasound scans, CT scans. You learn about how to interpret them, mechanisms behind them, etc. etc. And then you have four weeks break. The four weeks they're giving you is for you to go and do your electives. I did mine in Abuja and I have a video there. I'm gonna put the link somewhere around here. I do your own US, you can do it in South Africa, UK, whatever. <coughs> that five level we research methodology for two weeks. We search methodology two weeks. They'll teach you how to go about your projects because it's that final level you're supposed to do your project do your professional exam and do your oral defense of your project that, ah senior posting you no know, more that's where i am right now i'm seeing shake oh. how many level is not easy but it used to be worse before now it's way better 500 level what we do is community health for three months pediatrics for three months and obstetrics and gynecology for three months so this is your senior posting the what you did in junior posting 400 level and then after that you write your professional exam then you go and do your commerce three comments you go and do community insertion go and stay in a rural community and experience what it feels like to be a community doctor like give healthcare in that community so that's what you do for one month 
after the three months posting up. Then you go and do vacation or receipt exam after your professional exam and defense. Senior level is the final year. Three months for internal medicine, three months for surgery, senior posting, senior posting. Then you do some other minor postings. So you also do critical care posting um, for about two weeks. You do your radiology posting for about two weeks. You do psychiatry again, this is senior posting. You do emergency medicine as a posting. And then, then there's something we call sub-internship that we do. It's actually a new addition for about six weeks. You know, your professional exam and then you're free for life. This curriculum that we use now is called the SPICES curriculum. Very new curriculum that started a unilag in the set above my set. So my set is the second set. The first set were lab rats. We were on one. See the assistant lab rats. You think that this SPICES curriculum, what I should know about is that it is students based. So it's very students based and then there are a lot of case bases there. So not just about learning, learning, learning. You want to be able to apply that to clinical cases even before you start your clinical years. So you start from maybe basic clinical skills, you start doing basic clinical skills in 200 level and basic technical skills in 300 level as well. Start learning basic things of um, the clinical practice even before you start your clinical years. I didn't really, I did those but in a, on a very minute level. You know I said we're one of the lab rats. But the set um, below me, we're really doing it and it's, it's really a nice idea and i think i really like the curriculum i think it's it's not it's it's stressful man i mean like i thought i liked hard work oh my dear when i entered medical school i mean i know see hard work past hard work when i entered medical school i ran away from hard work bro thank you guys so much for watching welcome to the end of the video i'm so glad i was able to finally do this because some people really needed it please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed and you're getting all this content from me ah you're a bad person yeah, very bad first see. see you guys next time so instagram um instagram tiktok don't forget to follow me on those my other social media platforms and you guys are you guys seeing our growth on instagram i'm so happy you guys are really doing an amazing job you guys are sharing you guys are posting you guys are commenting you guys are engaging you guys are beautiful you guys are amazing i am so i'm so happy i've been so happy these past few weeks because of the growth i've been seeing i know that it's thanks to you guys because you guys have been doing the work so don't stop doing the work, don't stop sharing my content, don't stop commenting, don't stop liking, don't stop doing all the things you usually do normally. See you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>